All right, Shalom, Shalom. We the Brothers of Great Millstone, the church in Birmingham, Alabama. And as always, want to begin by giving all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah, by Hashem Rechak Yeah, in the ancient Hebrew tongue, those will be the correct names of the Heavenly Father, His only begotten Son, and the Holy Spirit. Also, we'd like to give double honors to our teachers, the head apostles and the elders of Great Millstone. Shalom to the fellow laborers out there. And as always, you believers, the Akiyam as well as the Akwaf, those of you who subscribe to this truth as well. So, yeah, we back once again through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashan Abishai. I got the brother Konawa as well as the brother Dawada with me. And, you know, the spirit is on us once more to go into another quick lesson, which um, the overtone of it, as always, is, is driven and inspired by the testimony of our Lord Yahweh Shai, which would be what? The spirit of prophecy. Which when you consider prophecy, it pretty much overall details the disturbing future of this place of America, Babylon the Great, in which the scriptures go into detail, you know, it gives you a vivid illustration concerning, you know, the, the anger of Yahweh Basham Shah, which is kindled really towards Esau, the so-called white man. Real quick, let's start off in um Jeremiah, the 49th chapter. I want to say the eighth verse, because the Lord has pronounced evil against the so-called white man, his, his inheritance, his heritage, as it is written in the book of Malachi, the first chapter, I have uh, made thy heritage a waste for the dragons. So the so-called white man's very being, his very existence, proves that a destruction is coming, all right, when the scriptures is read with understanding. Right, so come on up. This is Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 8. It says, Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of the Dan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him. Right, the Lord said he would bring the calamity of Esau upon him. And hey, that sounds like a threat, man. All right? And you see the way it's framed, the wording, it pretty much represents the future, a appointed time. And this is where prophecy comes in. When you understand the essence of prophecy, it's really an effort to establish judgment. That, that's what prophecy, the science behind prophecy is, is to reward. Hey, case in point, when you consider Israel and, and our trespasses against you, how about you, how was shy? You know, our offenses as touching the law, statutes, and commandments of the Heavenly Father. Well, the, the punishments for those offenses was reserved. That's why when you read Deuteronomy, the 28th chapter, the Lord pretty much projects the things that will fall upon Israel. You see, uh, when you consider Noah, it was a, a ministry. The, the duration of the ministry was 100 and what was it, 120 years? Right? It was a build-up to judgment. See? Let's read that again. Huh? Okay. Jeremiah 49 and 8. Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of the Dan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him. See, I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him. Go ahead. The time that I will visit him. The time that I will visit him. See that? So what we read in here is the scriptures giving you a glimpse into the anger of your how about some how shot, man. You know, you might say, well, I'll see you Friday, you know. It, it's it's the anticipation, the build up, right? So again, prophecy projects uh the, the judgments pretty much that your how about some how shot has prepared. Which we understand, those of us in the know, we understand the duality and perfection of Yahweh by Hashem Yahweh Shah. This would mean simultaneously, right, there's a deliverance promised as well. Because the Lord is a balanced power. What's that Proverbs? Is that Proverbs the 11th chapter? Um, uh, um, an uh, unbalanced weight is an abomination. Is that it? Okay, that's it. Hey, matter of fact, let's get that real quick. Okay, 
this is the book uh, of Proverbs, chapter 11. Got it. Oh, we get, we get kind of verse okay. 11, uh, oh, yeah, uh, as a matter of fact, corner one, you can expound on it. Got it. Proverbs 11 and 1, it says, A false balance to the Lord, Yahweh Shah, excuse me, a false balance is abomination to the right. Lord. Abomination means what? A filthy thing. All right, so a false balance, meaning uh, unjust weights, is a filthy thing. Go ahead, up. But a just weight is his delight. All right, so a righteous weight is a delight of the Most High. And that's what we're saying taking place. That's the elder brother going into. Hey, you can't you can't expect to get goodness out of doing evil, man. All right, and vice versa. And it's the same with the most high. That's why um, what is that? Proverbs 13 and 13. He yeah. that the size of the word shall be destroyed. But on the other hand, those that uh delight in the word, they're they're gonna receive salvation. Right. Those that fear the commandment, that's it. That's it. So what's taking place here on the planet Earth right now, if I may, if I can interject, mm -hmm. um, is nothing more than a manifestation of the anger of your how about some hours shot. This is nothing random. Like here by motherfucker dying a house fire or horrific car accident. And it's so much news out there. And we're gonna we're gonna bring out information as well. Things is happening here on the planet Earth. That perplexity that you read about in Luke, the 21st chapter. The evils that set to befall the planet Earth. Well, guess what? We're in the midst of it, All right? And current events proves that your how about some outside sprung into action, man. Okay, this is that time. Hey, that's why there's a desire for deliverance. Why in your spirit you desire to be saved? Why is it a a conscious effort pushed forth to be preserved? Why is your hopes wrapped around your how about some outside? bestowing favor and grace upon you because deep down instinctively you know that this is the time of judgment see matter of fact let's go to uh, let's go to um second corinthians the sixth chapter in the uh second verse okay this is second corinthians chapter six <clears throat> and verse two for he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. Right, and the key word that is time. Mm -hmm. You see? Which prophecy and time goes hand in hand. That's why when you read, what's that? First Thessalonians, the fifth chapter, concerning the times and seasons, brethren, mm -hmm. you have no need that I write unto you. Why? Because ye yourselves know perfectly, you see? Also, when you read, um, what's that, Second Ezra, the ninth chapter? Measure the time diligently in itself. Yeah, I got that. That's beautiful. Let's go. Uh, Second Ezra, chapter 9, and we'll start at verse 1. It says, He answered me then and said, Measure thou the time diligently in itself. Right. Measure thou the time diligently in itself. And how do you measure the time? Through the Holy Scriptures, which serves as somewhat as a, a rod. Oh, it even tells you that in, um, oh, what's that? Uh, Revelation 11 chapter? Yep. Uh, that, yep. That's in the read. That read. Yep. It's a play on words, too. Read. Yep. <laughs> <laughs> That's the Holy Scriptures. That's why even when, hey, look, man, your how about some outside out there, man. That's why you got to be in a certain spirit even coming to this arena. Yeah. Else you'll be offended. Hey, that's why they said Yahweh Shai was a drunkard. Because when you drunk, you 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 all over the place. You can't quite get the words. But what's wrong with you? Why? I can't understand what you're saying. Yeah. You see? So this can become offensive. You you ear hustle, you a fly on the wall over here. You're gonna become offended because what's being presented is not of this realm. So it's a play on words. Now I'm gonna say that I want to say this real quick. When you consider the Bible, it looks like a measuring stick. When you we see the chapter, we see Psalms 23, 1, 2, 3. 
right? And, and, that, and you brothers, you brothers, y'all brothers work. Y'all got uh, tape measures, right? You got that number. That you got those little right. numbers, and it all come together. It links together. So we measure the time through the Holy Scriptures, man. All right. When we read Revelation the thirteenth chapter and the sixteenth verse as touching the karagma, and we peer out into the world. And we see the momentum moving fastly approaching, you know, concerning the digital, the CBDC, right? We said, oh, I know what time we in. Mm -hmm. You got guys out there saying, nope, this is not the time to get on ESOP. That means that your measurements is off. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. Mm -hmm. It says. Hey, hold up. We building over here. <laughs> That's why Yahweh Shai was known as, Yahweh Shai is the carpenter, man. And just a quick nugget, that proved that that was Solomon. Because Solomon was given the charge of building the temple, man. That's why when you fast forward to when Yahweh Shai came on the scene, uh, he was known as the, the scriptures made a conscious effort in the, in the writings to say he was the carpenter's son. For those of us who have understanding, we know that that links him with Solomon, man. All right, the master builder. See that? Come on, up. He says, he answered me then and said, measure thou the time diligently in itself, and when thou seest part of the signs pass, See, which goes in the prophecy, go ahead, which I have told thee before, See that? Uh -huh. then shalt thou understand that it is the very same time wherein the highest will begin to visit the world which he made. Oh, 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 let's go back to Jeremiah the 49th chapter now. Mm-hmm. Let's connect the dots. Okay, this is Jeremiah chapter 49 and verse 8. It says, Flee ye, turn back, dwell deep, O inhabitants of the Dan, for I will bring the calamity of Esau upon him, the time that the I will time, visit him. The time, go ahead. That I will visit him. Which Compliments what we just read in uh, Second Ezra the ninth chapter, where we are to measure the time diligently in itself, and ultimately come through the come to the conclusion through wisdom through the spirit of power Yahweh Shemayah Shai that this will be the season of the visitation of Yahweh Shemayah Shai, making this a heavy moment in prophecy. Man, the Lord has awakened, if you will, and has now sprung into action, and is set to execute. The judgment is prepared for the so-called white man. You can even read about that in Isaiah the 14th chapter, where the Lord said he had wept, prepared judgment for their children, right? I'm loosely paraphrasing, but you brothers know what I'm talking about. Isaiah the 14th chapter, prepared slaughter for his children. That's it. So it all revolves around time, this entity time, which again coincides with biblical prophecy. That's why it's an emphasis on knowing what times and seasons you in. If you're not covered with this cloak, that means you're out of season. It's equivalent to someone in the dead of the winter with, with some Hawaiian shorts, right? And some Chicleto sandals. All right, so come on. Right, let's go back to um, Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter. This is uh, Second Corinthians, the sixth chapter. And you're gonna see, for those of you who have eyes to see, we're gonna we're gonna be shown certain things. Remember, Yahweh said that in Matthew the 24th chapter, when you see the, the fig tree begin to bud forth, then you know what summer is not. That means you know what season you're in. See, we're not in the season of becoming acclimated in America, you know, uh uh dotting your I's and crossing your T's that's touching your five-year, your 10-year plan. No, we're in the spirit of pilgrims now. We understand that everything is shut down at any time, and we are pretty much anticipating the world to come, the world that was promised, all right, by Yahweh Shah. Come on. Second Corinthians 6 and 2, for he saith, I have heard thee in a time accepted. So again, the very word time. This is the, the time where Yahweh Shemayahu has once more begun to show favor to the children of Israel, beginning at his elect. Come on. And 
in the day of salvation, I have secured thee. Well, hold up. If there is a day of salvation, that will mean that there is a day of destruction. See? In order for me to be saved, I must be in harm's way. Remember, when you look back in retrospect, which we are encouraged to consider our forefathers, right? Tells you that in Job, the eighth chapter, search out thy fathers. Well, Daniel, for an example, in order for him to be delivered from the lion's den, he had to be cast in it. The three holy children, in order for them to be delivered from the fiery furnace, they had to be cast in it. So this day of salvation that we read in here can only come forth by way of a day or a time reserved for destruction. Read that one more time, Mark. Okay, it says. Hey, it hey, says, hey, that's, hey, you can like it. You got these Christians, man. Stay away from Christians. That's a, you can get contaminated. If you ain't in the right spirit, we touched on that last night. If you still got, if you still hung over from Christianity, you're going to be taken. You hear that word love. That's that's a word that'll get you. But I said that to say this. These Christians, they actually have the nerve to utter that phrase, I'm saved. Hmm. Saved from what? First and foremost, you don't control your next breath. Your coming and going is, is uh, based upon powers that's far beyond your comprehension. So in order for you to be saved, you must be in a time of destruction. The days of old and Noah, with Noah, that was the time of destruction. Why? Because the Lord reserved salvation for Noah and his, and his household. Come on. Okay. It says, and in the day of salvation, I have secured thee. Behold, now is the accepted time. Behold, now is the day of salvation. Right. Now is the accepted time. Now is the day of salvation. Now, real quick, let's look on this word time. Okay. That word time, Strong's G, 2540. It says, do measure a measure of time. Right. Now, did we not just read that in 2nd Ezra, the ninth chapter? Mm -hmm. Measure the time diligently in itself. Because time is actually measured off into, into uh, ages, set, sections, different worlds. So we know we're in the end time because um, this is, is a certain appointed season. No different with, with physical seasons. All right? By default, you measure that time. You know, we're in the beginning of summer. Go ahead. Okay. It says a larger or smaller portion of time. Hence right. A larger or, or, or smaller portion of time. In this case, Esau would be in a smaller portion of time. Remember the scriptures say that he would be given a short time. What's that? Revelation, the 20th chapter. His days are as a hireling. I believe that's Job, the 8th chapter as well at the beginning. All right. Matter of fact, you know what? Uh, let me see some real quick. Um, I believe that's. Um, you know what? Let me look it up right here. And and while I'm looking it up, go to um. I believe that's Revelation the 12th, yeah, Revelation 20 and, um, oh man, either it's four or eight, he was given that short time to rule, okay. <clears throat> which, which complements um, Matthew the 24th chapter, at least those days be shortened, right? That's concerning the so-called white man's uh, uh, short time to rule. That's why, again, his reign is compared to a shadow. All right. Uh, All right. Um, yeah, you got it up. Current Revelations chapter 20. I'm going to start at verse 7. It says, And when a thousand years was expired, Satan was loosed out of his prison. 
and he shall go out to deceive the nations which are in the four corners of the earth, Gog and Magog, to gather them together to battle, the number of whom is as the sand of the sea. It says, and they went up on the breath of the earth and compassed the camp of the saints about and the beloved city. Mm, let me see. Salaki. I believe it's on up. Uh, Salaki, let me look on his end. Yep. The little uh, season. Kern, yeah, Kern, Salakia. Uh, this is Revelations 20 and 3. Yep. It says, and cast him into the bottomless pit and shut him up and set a seal upon him that he should deceive the nations no more mm -hmm. till the thousand years should be fulfilled. And after that, he must be loosed a little season. A little season. See? So that's why you see the word time in the same breath with me you know, measurements. All right? Because just like, you know, naturally, organically, the, the seasons have a certain time. It doesn't stay summer all year round. There's a method to that. What's that, Ark? Is that Daniel, the second chapter? He changes the times. And seasons, uh, he uh, removeth kings. Matter of fact, you can get that up, Baba Kasha. It's uh, Daniel, yeah. And Baba Da, Baba Kasha, can you pull up uh, Proverbs, the 10th chapter, and the 27th verse? And we're gonna get back to those definitions. It's Daniel 2 and uh, verse 21. It says, Yeah, and we, we get these same precepts, right? Mm -hmm. For the most part. Why? Because uh, uh, this this thing is uh, what's the old saying? Um, of uh, uh, the the father of skill. Yeah. Oh yeah. Uh, 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 rep, rep, uh, repetition is the father of skill. Yeah, it's the father of skill. You don't run one play. You know, let's say like if you on a, a, a organized basketball team, mm -hmm. football team. You don't want run one play and expect to have it down pat. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this hey, you know what? This comes with the patience of the Lord, man. Right. Hey, somebody said, Are we there yet? You keep asking the same question. We keep telling you the same thing. All right, come on. Uh, Daniel 2 and 21. He changeth the times and the seasons. See? He removed the kings and set up up kings. He give of wisdom unto the wise and knowledge to them that know understanding. See that? So the removal and setting up of kings, again, is in the same breath with the change of times and seasons. Hey, and why did the Lord frame it as such? Because you have no power in that. Mm -hmm. Just like you can't change the time, you can't stop the changing of the times and seasons. Well, guess what? You can't stop the momentum of kings being removed and set up. That's why the Lord framed it like that, man. As much as you love the spring, huh. you, you're going to start pulling out that sweater yeah. in a minute. Why? Because there's nothing you can do. You have to adjust. You have to get out and lay down, man. So it doesn't matter how much you know you, you resist the spirit, you come up against the report, right? Your incredulity and no wise will stop the momentum of your how about some hour shot as touching the changing of the guard. That's inevitable. It's gonna happen. Esau gonna be moved from the power seat. And guess what? The poor, we're gonna be raised up to occupy that state. And that don't sit well with a lot of people. Right. That's uncomfortable. Like, come on, I, we can go. Um, let's get that Proverbs 10 and 27. This is the book of Proverbs, chapter 10. And verse 27, the fear of the Lord prolong of days. Right, the fear of the Lord prolong of days. So this power has the jurisdiction over lengthening days. All right? Stretching out your days. Go ahead. It says, but the years of the wicked shall be shortened. Read that again. But the years of the wicked shall be shortened. See, which complements what we read in Revelation, the 20th chapter, and pretty much overall falls under the the uh, uh, 
banner of the message that we present unto you. This is a short season, it's, it's limited. The Lord gave the so-called white man a certain time to rule. His days are numbered from the years to the months, the weeks, the days down to the second. Right. With precision. And in no wise will he be able to add a, a millisecond, a moment. He can't, he can't relive, he can't add a moment to this. Because the Lord has already shortened it. And guess what? This is what contributes to our comfort. All right. This is why uh, when you read Romans, the 10th chapter speaks about those who bring forth the good news and glad tidings. Mm -hmm. We sing the song. We bring the report that your, your punishment is over. All right. Your warfare has been accomplished and the Lord is now beginning to speak comfortably and favorably to the nation of Israel, beginning at his elect. All right. Come on. Right, so um, let's go back to that definition. And listen, any, any of your brothers got something? Yeah, I got some real quick. Yeah, come on. It's backing up that Daniel. Um, Psalms 75 and in verse 7, it says, But the most high is the judge. Hmm. Put up down one and set up up another. Beautiful. Hmm? So backing up that Daniel, you know, like the other brother just said, Esau can't add a, a millisecond on to his rulership. The time that the Most High have appointed for Esau Edom to go down, believe you me, Isaiah 55 and 11 shall be fulfilled. They're going to go down, man. Mm -hmm. Right? The, the, the time that the Most High, nobody know but the Most High have appointed for the salvation and the destruction of everything that we know of here on this planet is going to go down, man. So uh, it's the same with rulership. All right? The Most High is the judge. What is that? Uh, Job, the deceived and deceiver are his. With him is, is strength and, and might, roughly paraphrasing that. Meaning, you know, the most high is that omnipotent power. Meaning what? He put him down one and he set up up another. Just like he put us down and he rose Esau up. He gonna, what? Put Esau down and put the rightful rulers in the rulership. That was it on that. Right. That complements also a Sirach the 10th chapter. Yeah. Scripture say the Lord is the judge. I'm mean, not, not, you just read that one. Um, Scriptures say uh, the earth is in the hand of the Lord. Yeah. And in due see, oh, matter of fact, let's get that. Let's get that real quick. And that's promised. We're going to pull up a couple of these articles, right? And you're going to see where we in that time. And we're going to get back to that definition for time. Because again, the reason why the scriptures, you know, uh, outline those qualities of eyes to see and ears to hear, which is essentially instincts, your antennas being up, well, that's because you're going to see certain things take place on the planet Earth. You're going to measure it through the scriptures, which is that rod, that reed, and, and basically, you're going to be comforted. You're going to be given clarity. You see? And you're going to know what season you're in as uh, uh, written in 1 Thessalonians, the fifth chapter. Mm -hmm. Again, Brethren, uh, what did it say? Uh, brethren, concerning the times and seasons, you have no need that I write unto you. Right. So by understanding this information, you have now been uh, uh, thrust into an elite, if you will, category of spirits who are, are perceived as favorably in the sight of the highest powers conceivable, man. You got you to gotta let that digest. Having this information is nothing to gloss over, man. You're in an elite club now. Now, remember, there's a clause in the contract. Yahweh Shai encourages us to wet, endure until the end. Right. We just say continue the path, continue in the doctrine. But as it were, you are here. So in that event, it will behoove all of us to hold fast. Oh, Yahweh Shai said that right. Right. <laughs> hold fast to that which thou hast. That the script is pretty much giving you an idea of the sense of urgency that comes with getting this information. All right, so come on. Right. Okay, this is Ecclesiasticus chapter 10 and verse 4. The power of the earth is in the hand of the Lord. Meaning what? Those who occupy the power seat is determined by Yahweh by Shem mm -hmm. He shaped and fashions kings through his hand, which is Yahweh Shah. Go ahead. And in due time, he will set over it one that is profitable. 
See, in what? In due time. See, that's why uh, the theme pretty much of the lesson is what? Measuring the time diligently in itself. And how do we do that again? Through the process of filtering it through the prophetic sayings of the Holy Scriptures. Which with accuracy pinpoints the very time that we're in. This is the GPS. This is a spiritual GPS. Right. We know where we're at. We know where we're going. We know America going to, to hell. In a hand basket. In a hand. <laughs> oh, in a hand. Yeah, you hear me, man. In a hand basket. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 All right, so come on, let's go to that back to that definition. Definition. And that's promise. We're gonna we're gonna spill over into the articles, and Lord will, we'll try to wrap it up. And that uh, definition for time it says due season a measure of time a larger or smaller portion of time hence it says so again it says smaller a larger or smaller portion of time in this case the so called white man occupies a smaller portion of time alright as prophesied as projected he will, he will reign for a little season we are in that little season. Come on. Okay, it says a fixed and definite time. Right. This time is fixed and definite. There is a purpose. This is an intent. This is a well thought out and calculated moment we in. There's nothing random about this. Esau didn't come into power uh, through a, a, a random, you know, um, certain fortunes he came across and it was just by the skin of his teeth. No, this was all thought out. This is a scene in the drama of Yahweh Bashem al shot. America is nothing more than a prop. Esau is nothing but a higher character in the movie. God. No different than your cane. No pun intended. <laughs> he went into society. He had his moments, but then it was a build up to him being gunned down in a barrage of bullets. Come on. Okay. It says the time when things are brought to crisis. Oh, the what? The time when things are brought to crisis. One more time. Uh. It says the time when things are brought to crisis. That's how we know we're in the end. Because as Yahweh Shai said again in Matthew the 24th chapter, when you see the, the figs beginning to bud forth, then by default, you have no choice but to know summer is not. Right. No matter how much you want to uh, ignore it, that bush in front of your house is starting to bud forth and show its leaves, you know spring coming. You can try to deny it. So these crises, the perplexity that the Lord promised that will befall the planet Earth is nothing more than a sign, a token for those of you out there with eyes to see, to consider, and know what season we're in. All right, so now uh, we can go there. Let's pull up what you got. We're gonna try to run through it. This is from <clears throat> CNN. It's like it from Reuters.com. It says Mississippi City says water pressure restored for now, but setbacks possible. It says the city of Jackson, Mississippi said most water pressure returned to normal on Sunday after the main treatment plant failed. While U.S. officials warned it was still too early to say when reliable supply of drinking water can be restored. Right. That's a sign that life is ending here. We're going to show you that. Once things dry up, Remember, even when Yahushua, Yahushua, um, I believe it was Luke the fourth chapter when Yahushua, he he pretty much made a, a heavy impression. He remember he went in the temple, and he read, um, he read in the writings the prophecies. Then he said, "This day in your hearing, this prophecy has been fulfilled." And they lost it on Yahushua. They wanted to kill Yahushua. Then Yahushua made the statement in the in the days of Elijah. 
that was a great drought. And only uh, the widow, uh, the widow from Assyria was saved. And they, they wanted to kill Yahweh But why did he make that point? Because a drought, when the water dries up, that's a sure sign of death. That's not a heart. You, when, when the water, when, when the water sh is shortened, then that means life is beginning to close, close up, man. That's why even the word is known as living waters. Because water is what, what contributes to life. Another thing, you can't grow without water. We, we're going to get into that. All right, so come on. It says. Real quick, these are signs that the Lord is now visiting Esau. Just like he visited Pharaoh, it's Esau time now. And it's subtle things that take place. That's why the scriptures say, keep thy eye single. The scriptures encourage you to be attentive, to follow, to, to follow the instructions of a father. Somebody giving you instructions, you know, you should be taking notes like, oh, okay. So we are watching everything closely through the spirit and power of Yahweh Bashim Shah, and we are connecting the dots. This drought of water and it's being publicized is a symbol of the fall of, of America, man. Matter of fact, we're going to continue on this and um, we're we going to make sense of this through the spirit. Come on. Up. It says the majority black state capital of 150,000 plus, about 30,000 people in the surrounding community have gone without reliable drinking water since Monday when complications from flood waters knocked the OB Curtis water plant offline. It says, people have been urged to boil any tap water before drinking while state and federal authorities have declared an emergency distributing bottled water yeah, and these these devils, right? They uh they sent over what was it eight million eight million to to, to Ukraine. Mm -hmm. they, they sent to two million to um they sent all this these these, these benefits over to them gutter rats. Okay. But they told Jackson, Mississippi, drink don't drink the water. Uh, which, by the way, I don't know if you just read that um. Jackson, Mississippi is pro, pro, uh, predominantly so-called blacks. Mm -hmm. That's that's Jake is ran down. We done been out there a couple of times. That place through, man, is ran down. All right, they left everything over to the blacks out there, and they pretty much it's, it's a it's nothing more than a feeding frenzy. And they not uh putting none of the money into the city. They just pocketing everything, man. Yeah, go ahead. Huh? Okay, it says. On Sunday, water pressure exceeded the city's goal for the first time, and multiple storage tanks around the city were full. It says the city said in a statement, while also warning that progress could fluctuate as further repairs and adjustments are made. That's not good news. Progress fluctuating. Now, when you read, and we ain't got to get it, I just quote it. When you read Isaiah, the third chapter, it tells you that eventually the Lord will take away the state and the staff, right? The state of bread and wet water. I got it. You got that up? Yeah. yeah, go ahead and bring it up. I got it. One, it says, For behold, the Lord, the Lord, Yahweh Hashem, Yahweh Shab host, do mm -hmm. take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the state and the staff, the whole state of bread and the whole state of water. Right, so there's a famine coming as projected that's going to lay hold, it's going to seize America, and also a shortage of water. And it's going to be orchestrated, it's all going to be instigated by the Lord of hosts. Now that's why, the, hey, it's the reason why the Lord introduced himself in that precept as the Lord of hosts. Okay. Uh, you go to that word host, it goes in the armies. Yeah. You know, versus the Lord coming to us uh what what's that Isaiah the 40th chapter the Lord is speaking to us comfortably mm -hmm. so the same message that y'all hear it, it's not a sweet savor to y'all but it's it, it it's a symbol of hope for us 
All right? That's why you have to become a new creature in Yahweh Shah because to entertain this form of teaching, you pretty much have to desire destruction to come. All right, come on. That was it on it, Doc? Yep, God, that was it. Right, but again, that word stay in staff is key because it represents what? The stability of you people. And again, that's what water provides. Once the water dry up, everything is bleak from that point. All right? All right, come on. Okay. This is from CNN.com. It says, this city. Yeah, it's, it's actually guys that profess down in Mississippi, right? Them guys say they're doing miracles. Then, oh, what? Hey, the Lord, come. this is the time. This is a good time. Mm. This is a good time to show us that you can perform miracles. All right, come on. Okay, it says, <laughs> has around 20 days of fresh water left. Oh, 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 read that again. Read that again right there. Okay, it says, this city has around 20 days of fresh water left. Officials are racing to find another source. Now, this is in New Mexico, right? Okay. Now, if I'm not mistaken, I believe it's also connected with, with Vegas. Mm -hmm. From what I, yeah, so let, we'll see. If it's the same article, but uh, you you got it up. Okay, it says. Hey, but just think about that. Hmm. Think about that. Twenty days of of drinking water left, which has now forced the authorities, if you will, to scramble. Yeah, how about some outside sprung into action, man? We read it, Jeremiah the forty ninth chapter. The Lord said, "There's a time." Well, he's going to begin to pursue Esau, the visitation. He's going to step down on Esau, man. And this should be marvelous in your eyes. You should be ecstatic. You should be elated that the Lord has now begun to make inquisition because it's on our behalf. Uh, remember, the scriptures say the Lord will begin to plead the cause of Israel. I believe that's uh, Isaiah, the 52nd chapter. Mm -hmm. He who pleaded the call of his people. Come on. Okay. It says... A city in New Mexico has about 20 days of fresh water left. And officials there are scrambling to find another <laughs> to prevent cancer causing prodigals from flowing out of faucets. It says the hillsides around Las Vegas, New Mexico. Right, Las Vegas, yep. So Sin City. Okay. The stun going to come to an end. All right? Go ahead. Uh. We might need a stun in moments. <laughs> because it's only a moment in time. Hey, uh, we read that last night. Uh, Wisdom of Solomon, the seventh chapter. The light in... Uh, um, we, we prefer this light over the light of the world. Because this light eventually goes out. Every all you all of those of you who had somewhere status in this world, you had that moment in time where your candle went out. A lot of them was flickering. Come on. Up. Okay. It says the hillsides around Las Vegas, New Mexico, was scorched by the state's largest wildfire on record this spring. It says which burned more than three hundred and forty thousand acres. Then, an unusually wet monsoon season brought significant summer rainfall, something that would typically be celebrated in the drought-stricken West, but instead has led to disaster upon disaster. Oh, disaster upon disaster. Uh, I think that's almost the fifth chapter that come to mind. As he who fled from a a, a lion and a bear met him. And once he escaped from the bear, he, he retrieved into a house and leaned his hand on the wall. He thought he was relieved. Then a serpent bit his hand. That's the scriptures giving you a vivid illustration of the visitation of Yahweh by Shema Shah. It's not going to be any escape. The only ones who would be able to escape the wrath of the Heavenly Father would be the elect. Those who would be hedged, who would be housed, if you will. 
all right, in the pavilion of Yahweh by Shem Abishai. Thus, you know, cementing th that uh, preservation. All right, come on. You got anything? I got a quick precept. Yeah, come on. This is the book of Ezekiel. <clears throat> Yeah, so everything is going according to plan. You know? Brothers and sisters alike, your faith should be strengthened. The more bad news, hmm. the more you should rejoice. All right, right now we're in the Day of Atonement. Okay, this is the time where uh, pretty much the doors are open, the windows are open on high. All right, afflict yourselves and present yourself before you. How about some how shot? Right? Think about it. You got all these spirits at one time praying to the Lord. The stage is set, man. For the Lord to take action. Come on. I said something real quick. Yeah, you got it up. What you said, um, because a person, an unlearned person, first of all, will marvel at the statement you just made. More bad news. Hell yeah, that's what we waiting on. Mm -hmm. More bad news. Like we always say, bad news to the world is good news to us. Good news to us is bad news to the world. Why why are we waiting on more bad news? Because you said, like you said earlier, and like the lesson, we measuring the time diligently. You know, that lets us know that our salvation is near when we first believe. You know, everything is coming to a climax. That was just busy adding on what you said. Yeah, that, that's a great point, you know? And that proves that you have to be wired a certain way. Right. See? And and matter of fact, before we continue, uh, what's that? Go to Proverbs the eleven chapter, mm -hmm. and um the twenty third verse. All right, it's um Proverbs eleven and uh and twenty three. It says, "The desire of the righteous is only good." But the expectation of the wicked is wrath. Yeah, it's like you read that again. Proverbs 11 and 23. It says the desire of the righteous is only good. Right. And, <laughs> and what our desire is for America to be destroyed. But, but the scriptures say that's good. Yeah. That proves that you have to become a new creature, man. Right. You can't subconsciously bring the baggage of the world in this because you're not going to be able to coexist within the, the courts of your house by some hours shot. So you have to desire for, for destruction. You have to desire for mayhem. You have to desire for misfortunes, calamities, famine. Mm -hmm. That's why even your house said, when you see these things, right. look up. Right. Cheer up, baby. Right. <laughs> 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 yeah, come on. <laughs> That's the logic. That's inside joke. All right, go ahead, up. Uh, it says, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. See, but the expectation of the wicked is wrath. So no matter how much you feel optimistic about the future of America, your expectations is wrath. Out of all the scratching and clawing, tooth and nail, checking out your checklist, your bucket list, and your 10 year and five year plans, the results is going to be wrath. Like that's real quick. That's heavy you said the results because when you go into the word uh, expectation, one definition for it in the Strong's, um, uh, Strong's H8615, it says outcome. Wow. That's heavy. Because you get in what you put, you, you, yeah. you get, you get, um, how it goes, you get in what you put in. Okay. Right. Right. You get in what you put out. Mm -hmm. So none of these people are not making uh uh your how about some outside a refuge. They put their stock in the Esau, which Esau very existence and being centers around death, destruction. That's why he's known as the son of perdition. You investing in destruction. Right. Everybody outside this circle, you investing in famine. You investing in a, a, a wild boar, probably. 
Hmm. Hey, because the Lord's going to, hey, you know, a, a hog pop up in your shit. Hmm. Hey, because the Lord, see, when the judgments come forth, you're going to know it was a higher power because it's going to be a strange overtone to it. That's why the scripture speaks about the strange calamities of Yahweh by the outside. When the Lord visited ancient Egypt, they couldn't make no other sense of that. That's why uh, the scriptures say the Lord is known by his judgment, and that's when his fame came. Because right now you got these devils, they got all these explanations. Well, um, you know, due to the precipitation and blah, blah, and voila, you have a, a, a wildfire. That's that's equivalent to, to you know saying the elbow is connected to the wrist and the wrist reach out. Man, fuck all that. The results, the outcome right. is rough. And we know that it's orchestrated by your how about your mouth shot. But again, it's gonna become a point where they ain't gonna be able to even explain that away. Mm -hmm. Your pronosticators, your witches and warlocks, your meteorologists, they're not gonna be able to explain away. When you wake up to a damn bear in the next room. Mm -hmm. All right, come on. Real yeah. quick, up. Real quick before we go back. The brain is out real quick. Just going off what you just said about the wicked. Mm -hmm. Always bring this out. Galatians 6 and 7. <laughs> Be not deceived. Yep. yep. Most high is not mocked. It says, for whatsoever a man soweth, that shall he also reap. So Esau, you can't expect nothing but destruction. Mm. You know, I mean, I fuck you gonna expect something, you know, like you said, you, you get out what you put into it. So Esau has put nothing but rape, robbery, murder, bloodshed, lies, and all, all sorts of wickedness throughout his, his creation, man. So what 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 makes him think that he's gonna stay on rule stay on top forever or rule forever? You know? One more. It says, "For he that soweth to his flesh, shall of the flesh reap corruption." Hmm. And we know Esau, Edom is what is a, is a carnal man. Carnal man. Yep. Yeah. It says, "But he that soweth to the spirit," and that's with a capital S. <laughs> it says, "Shall of the spirit reap everlasting life." And that goes back to the scripture that you brought out earlier. You know the expectation of right. the. And then the uh, uh, the righteous look for the for the for the good. So yeah, that's that's uh, Esau being that carnal man, and that's all he he's done carnal things, which really is wicked, man. But Lord willing, we endure until the end. We're what we're soaring to that to that 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 life breathing spirit. Therefore, what what we gonna we gonna get out that life breathing spirit? Like the scripture said, life everlasting. Mm -hmm. That was it. That was it. Yeah, uh, because. You know, Esau, he puts out confusion. Mm -hmm. And that's what he's going to get back. Right. You can put all that money into the LGBTQ. Yeah. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah. Matter of fact, real quick, um, Double Dog V. Will, can you pull up? Um, let me see. Um, Psalms, the 18th chapter, and it's the 26th verse. Yeah. This is hey, because the Lord is a just power. You get out what you put in. Mm -hmm. That's why when you read about the judgment in Revelation, the 22nd chapter, uh, the Lord framed it as a reward. The, the reward of the wicked. So you being rewarded, you earn. Esau earned his ass with it. Go ahead, huh? This is Psalms chapter 18 and verse 26. It says, with the pure, thou shalt shew thyself pure. Right, so if you're pure, the Lord's going to show himself pure to you. You know? Go ahead. And with the forward, thou shalt show thyself forward. Right, and the forward, when you go to the word forward, it means twisted, perverse. So that's how the Lord's going to show himself to Esau. Since you want to play crazy, the Lord's going to get crazy with you. Pretty much. So if it's a war you want, it's a war you get, Esau. So that's why the Lord said, with the, with the perverse, with the forward, I'm going to show myself perverse and forward. That, that's a heavy king right there. He's not just uh, bound to one emotion, you know. No, you want to get nasty, the Lord can get just as busy 
All right, come on. Uh, <laughs> Ezekiel chapter 7 and verse 5, it says, Thus saith the Lord power, and evil and only evil, behold, is come. I'm just I'm going back into that article. It said disaster upon disaster. That's the fate that's, that's slated for America. Like you said earlier, uh, that's his heritage, the, the sign of destruction, the sign of perdition. It says, an end is come. The end is come. It watcheth for thee. Behold, it is come. And that's what, by way of the prophecies, we're measuring the time diligently. And we're just waiting on things to come to pass. And, and we're seeing them. You know, they're right before our eyes. You got it. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so uh, I know we had something else. Uh, we'll just hold back on whatever the other articles. Because, hey, because y'all already know we'll be here, man. Things is happening in the planet Earth. But just let's end off right here. Um, Because, again, the two articles that the brother brought out, they, they really should be eye-opening articles for those of us in, in the know, all right? The serious-minded, the spiritually invested. We see where the water is drying up. Nothing random about it. Nothing coincidental. In fact, is a method to it. Remember, we're dealing with wisdom here when dealing with Yahweh Shah, man. There's teaching moments here. See? Things that's unfolding on the planet Earth is for the wise amongst the people to consider. And this is where we come in. So, again, when the water dries up, that's a telltale sign that life is, is vulnerable. Life is being compromised now. All right. So with that, let's go to um. Let's end off right here in Job the eighth chapter, and I want to say start at the sixth verse. No, nope. Salaki the ninth verse. Okay. This is Job <clears throat> chapter eight and verse nine. It says, "For we are but of yesterday, and know nothing." Mm hmm. Because our days upon earth are a shadow. Right. Now, understanding that this book, uh, and, and the proper understanding that comes with it requires you to understand that there's a prophetic overtone to it. Even from the very beginning, case in point, when you read Genesis, the fourth chapter, that's going into the future of Esau. As touching Cain, remember when Cain made the statement of, uh, Whosoever shall find me shall slay me. Mm -hmm. Well, that's going into the so-called white man in particular, the chief house of the nation of Edom, which is wrought forth in the form of these international bankers who operate under wet the shroud of secrecy. That's why Cain was, was uh, uh, plagued with the idea of people finding out who he was. That was a foreshadowing of the elites, man. All right? Which one of them could actually be Cain? Evan and Rothschild, one of them niggas. Right? And look, this is only for the serious minded. That's why the scriptures say, read that first part again. Huh? Okay. It says, for we are but of yesterday. You are of yesterday. Everybody here, you are from the past. Okay? Now, I said that to say this, what we read in here. It's to be applied to Esau right now. Let's prove that. Go back a verse. Go to Job, the seventh, seventh chapter. Go over a chapter, I mean, and go to the first verse. Okay. Let me see. Right. This is the book of Job, chapter seven, and verse one. Is there not an appointed time to man upon earth? Right. And you can read that with the naked eye and say, yep, every man has a time to be born and die. All right, go ahead. Are not his days also like the days of a hireling? But for those of us who have eyes, who view these through spiritual lenses, we know that this is ultimately talking about rulership, man. And scripture said there's an appointed time for man on earth that's dealing with these different nations having their time in place to have dominion over the planet earth. That's why when you read about the statue in Daniel, that's pretty much going into the appointed time of these nations. Well, the scriptures say there are nothing but a hireling. What's a hireling? Someone you hire for a particular reason. No different than an actor. All right, you got the drama, you got the movie, you got the a stage, which is the planet Earth. 
then you have these different nations that have their time to fulfill whatever role the Lord allotted them to. That's all. So Esau is nothing but a hireling who was given an appointed time on earth. That's why his scene in the movie as this time, uh, as it relates to this lifetime, is framed as shortened. Okay, so now let's go back to uh, Job 8 and uh, now the 10 verse. This is Job chapter 8 and verse 10. Shall not they teach thee and tell thee and utter words out of their heart? Right, and so every, these are teaching moments. Mm -hmm. If you're in this arena, you should be observ observative, observing things and getting an understanding out of it. We don't just read these articles and look at it like it's a random act. These things are teaching us. This is what's giving us clarity. All right? This charity is it gives you clarity. Because uh, really, um, what, what we present to you is charity. But that charity is clarity when you really go into it. Because that's a blessing to have eyes to see. Go ahead, huh? It says, can the rush grow up without mire? Mm -hmm. Can the flag grow without water? Yeah, read that again. Can, can the rush grow up without mire? Can the flag grow without water? And that's on all bases. So without water, right, it can't grow. So what's the symbol? What's the overtone? What's the teaching moment when the Lord allowed this information to go forth about droughts. It's a teaching moment that no more growth, baby. This thing's about to come to an end. Go ahead, Doc. Okay. It says, whilst it is yet in his greenness mm -hmm. and not cut down. Right, while it's yet in his greenness. And and that reminds me, um, what's that corner? What's that Psalms? Um, that's Psalm, that's Psalm 37, right? Yep, kind of. Psalm 37, verse Right. Two. It goes into uh, how they shall be cut down like the grass. Mm -hmm. That withers. When, when grass withers, it's because of no water. See? So this is not just something to gloss over. You're going into the, the scriptures, but, but the water shortages have nothing to do with it. No, man. That's a symbol. That's the bud, that's you seeing the signs pass because the Lord is physically showing you that this place is, is falling. And a telltale sign of that is a drop. Go ahead. It says, it withereth before any other herb. So are all the paths, excuse me, so are the paths of all that forgot the most high. And the yeah. hero so are all the paths of those who forget the most high which is clearly on display here under the watch of Esau man all right in fact and so in the revelation 11 chapter this is the place where they crucified our Lord furthermore you see a conscious effort to uh shadow ban pretty much the laws all right so Esau facilitates, he accommodates those who want to forget the most high. So we know the end to that story. <laughs> You're going to be handled, man. Go ahead, Doc. Okay. It says, and the hypocrite's hope shall perish. Right. And what, what, uh, we, we went into the precepts on that. Their hope is going to uh, uh, perish. See that? They expect, I mean, they they desire for America to get back on the right track. You got some who's more optimistic than others, but overall, they, they feel as if everything's going to get back to normal. But the Lord, what's the theme here? Their hopes shall perish. Thus the title of the lesson, Lament for Babylon. The Lord has pronounced evil against her. When somebody, you, all your hope is in this one basket, then an authoritative figure step in the room and say, nope. That's it, man. Matter of fact, uh, we're going to go back here. Go real quick to um, 2nd Ezra, the 16th chapter. And um, I believe that's the... Um, 
I believe it's the. Uh, yeah, just, just go straight to the point. The second verse. Okay. This is second Ezra chapter 16. Right and verse 2, it says, Gird up thy gird up yourselves with cloths of sack and hair. Right, and which those are um sack is is um pretty much a garment that represents mourning. See? What it says, beware your children mm -hmm. and be sorry mm -hmm. for your destruction is at hand. Right, the Lord, that's the message the Lord got for everybody out there. Mourn for your children because your destruction is prepared, is at hand. So, really, the only thing you people out there could do is cry, lament for Babylon. It's a funeral. She done. She has been smitten with a blow that she's not able to recover from. A death blow from your how about some out shot. You people shouldn't be jumping around dancing and tick tocking and bullshit, man. You should be weeping. Go ahead, huh? It says, a sword is sent upon you, and who may turn it back? Now, let's go back. Remember that. Let's go back to where we at. The Lord says, sword is sent upon you. Now, we understand the sword and what it represents ranges from the extremity of World War III and those arrows of your how about some outside the ICBM missiles. That's the sword in its height. But um, also, the sword sim symbolizes the Lord cutting your ass off, man. That's why that water supply is being cut off. That's why the food is being cut off. The normalcy of America is being uh, heavily compromised. Why? Because the Lord has prepared, sent forth that sword. And we read it, Lord. Well, matter of fact, let's go. Let's go back here. This is Job chapter 8 and verse 14. It says, whose hope shall be cut off? See? Read that again. It says, whose hope shall be cut off. Yeah, go ahead. And whose trust shall be a spider's web. Right. Yeah, you can't trust in that. How are you going to lean on a spider web? <laughs> Matter of fact, let's prove that that's what they're talking about. Continue the next verse. He shall lean upon his house. He, he shall lean upon his house. When you lean upon something, that's your stability. You see someone that's a cripple, he's leaning on that cane. Go ahead. But it shall not stand. Yeah, the so-called white man's plan is not going to stand. His desires. Go ahead. He shall hold it fast, but it shall not endure. This is not going to endure. All right? You can't come up with enough stimulus packages to offset your how about some outside. Now, real quick, I, out of curiosity, I ain't looking it up. I want to see what it gives you right here. We're going to close right here. Uh, cut off. I don't know if that's a phrase or not. Let's look that up, though, in the 14th verse. Uh, you got anything up? I had that, uh, I had that Luke, that what will I? Okay, kind. Yeah, if you want to bring it out, you can, you can bring that out. Um, I think that's Luke 14 and 47, if I'm not mistaken. Let me see Luke 14. I think it's Luke 12. Okay, 12. And, uh, I'm not mistaken. I don't, don't, don't okay. quote me on that. In fact, I think it is Luke 12. The water. Uh, yep, 12, 49. 49. And, uh, and 49, it says, I am come to send fire on the earth. Right? This, this, this is Yahweh Shai speaking. And what will I? If it already be kindled, so famine, uh, uh, which is a lack of uh, bread and water, which is a physical famine, that's a part of that fire that's going to be kindled before you have a shot even come, you know, to bring that ultimate fire, to bring that ultimate conclusion to the destruction. Yeah, just going to what what a brother was saying. Now you're being cut off with that sword mm -hmm. because the sword, like you said, one instance of a sword is to to divide. So you have a shot, all right. 
from the will of the Most High, uh, those are being divided from that that salvation, being divided from that that stay in that comfort that America always provided. All right, so that's why you got to up. You got it up. That door. Mm hmm. That oh damn, damn. You're right. That was the door. The door is the cutoff. That's true. That's true. That door really serves as to cut you off. You cut you off from coming in. Mm -hmm. Hey, and really a going out too, man. Because mm -hmm. I'm going to say some, you know, it's something really heavy to consider. Uh, it's nothing you can do to make yourself the elect. No. And it's also nothing you can do to make yourself not the elect. True. Because if you're the elect, you're going to come into this thing, you're going to believe, yeah. and, and you're going to um, walk oh. accordingly. Right, as touching the story, mm -hmm. but it's the door that that separates the two. It's actually Yahweh Shai. That's why, um, what's that Matthew? The is that Matthew the tenth chapter where the Lord said He came to bring the sword, mm -hmm. and He yeah. said, "I have not come to bring peace, but a sword." Mm -hmm. Then it goes on to say, "I have come to uh, separate mother from." Uh, daughter-in-law, father from son. Mm -hmm. That proves that that sword in that instance represents separation or cutting off. All right. So that's the vibration on the planet Earth. The Lord has released the sword. Man. The resources being compromised, everything, even your peace, your sanity going to be cut off, man. All you people out there. Mm -hmm. Everything that you had as a refuge, the Lord going to cut it off and you're going to be left Defend for yourself. Mm -hmm. And only those who have come into this arena is going to be protected, going to be hedged in that day. All right, come on. So we can go back, unless you had any more. That was it. All right, come on. So let's um, go back. Uh, uh, that definition. I don't know if it gives you that, but. Uh, I'm going to read the, uh, the precept again. It says, Job 8 and 14, it says, Whose hope? shall be cut off and whose trust shall be a spider's web that word cut off strong's h 69 6990 it says to be cut off break snap it says <laughs> um meaning dubious it says in the strong's uh, to clip off, i.e., destroy. <laughs> uh, yeah. Uh, which is uh, worth mentioning. All right. Uh, when you go into the word destroy, it, it has the overtone of, of uh, a process to it, man. All right. Just like the uh, uh, word construct or construction, that word destroy goes back to destruction which is both a process. So when the scripture speaks about being destroyed, the Lord destroying the so-called white man is a process. Pretty much meaning the Lord would take away the structure of Esau. It's equivalent to a blow-by-blow -blow situation. Oh, that's what scripture even say that. I have beat down my foes. When you beat someone down, it's a, you know, you're constantly welding on them. So what, what the so-called white man is experiencing, you people, all you people who have made this man your refuge, you, what you're uh, uh, experiencing is a, a continual stroke, all right? Death blows from your house by some your shot. Scourges. With each scourge is equivalent to another famine. Uh, it's like another pestilence, you know, such as the famine or such as... Uh, Power outages, water shortages, scarcity of food, and so on and so forth. All right. So with that, I want to give all praise, honor, and glory to Yahweh by Hashem, Yahweh Shai by Hashem, Rakhakodash, double honors to our teachers, the head apostles and elders, the great millstone. Shalom warm to the fellow laborers out there, and as always, you believe us. To the next time, shalom. Shalom. ETA. Abba, Abba. Soon. Soon, baby.